Hi, Pig. Morning. We heard you on the way. Yeah. Oh dear, that doesn't sound very it's, uh, good. RTA, female. A bit worried about the back legs. Okay. Although they do appear to have some movement. But you can see the way she's biting into the cloth there. Is she, did she do that as soon as you picked her up? Almost virtually. I mean, I was able to um, scruff her and put her into the, the cage, but she was quite lively. And do you know when she was hit? At some stage during the night, that's all we know. Okay, so it's not something recent. No. Right, she is actually using those legs. I'm really worried about the way she's that tremoring. Um, well, she was moving like right that on the road when I, when I got to her. Just lying there twitching like yeah. that. And I think she's obviously had one hell of a smash to the head and we've got serious sort of neurological symptoms. So I think possibly if we knock her out with some Valium and then she, obviously it will control these symptoms and then we can get some fluids and some anti-shock treatment in. Um, I think that's, to be honest, at the moment, I, regardless of whether there's an injury, I think that's the most immediate thing that we need to resolve. Okay. She's, and she's in quite a lot of pain, yeah. so... All right, we'll do that. We can get her out and have a closer look. Can you do it there? Uh, no, it's fine now. I'll just get some drawn up. All right, I'm just going to try and pop some in her back leg muscle without startling her too much. She's very, very jumpy, so um, we need to sort of limit any noise and movement until she's a little bit... More out of it. Alright baby. Oof, she doesn't even want to be touched, does she? Just pop some diazepam into her, which is Valium, which um, will sedate her and um, hopefully just put her into a nice um, gentle sleep so that we can have a good look at her but equally she's then not suffering from pain and um, to keep her nice and calm and it you know control this sort of involuntary tremoring movement which is obviously causing a great deal of distress at the moment. The badge is now heavily sedated so Sarah's able to move it from the cage to the treatment table for a closer examination. She's making that noise because she's in a, se a severe amount of pain, which worries me mm. because she looks fairly intact. She's obviously, ha I think she's probably had a very bad bang on the head. I mean, the way she's even latched onto yeah. the blanket is a real sort of, you know, absolute severe agony, you know, grabbing hot and they tend to little bite, don't they, just with the intense pain. Now, when an animal's gone into shock, um, even without any sort of bleeding or anything, that's going to cause the circulatory system to completely shut down. So we're going to attempt to put a drip in based on um, getting a vein, but we may not be successful. Sarah starts by attaching a drip into the badger's vein. The fluids will increase the circulatory volume and keep the blood pressure up. We're going to give her some treatment for shock, and it helps with any spinal trauma or neurological damage as well. She injects the solumedrone straight into the drip bag, which in turn will pass very slowly into the bloodstream. It will be an anxious few hours before we know if the badger responds to the treatment. All Sarah can do now is leave the sow warm and quiet and hope. Right, let's leave her to sleep. It's been 24 hours since the injured badger came into us. We really weren't expecting it to survive, so when Sarah went in to check it in the morning, she was extremely relieved. Not only had it managed to turn itself over, but it was also lifting its head slightly. Small but promising signs. But there's still a mystery to its condition. As there's no obvious wounds or breaks, Sarah's asked Guy, one of our volunteer vets, to see if there's anything we might have missed. 
I just try to localize the pain because it's so difficult. Because as Sarah said, every, every place you touch her, she's painful. And I want to see, despite what we thought yesterday, whether she was involved in a traffic accident. We're not certain what we're dealing with. Uh, we, we are suspicious that maybe she was um, involved in some sort of a traumatic event, where the road traffic accident, even though we can't find any external injury. But because she can't really support herself on her legs, then we suspect that maybe there's a spinal injury here. So maybe she was knocked on, on the head and the neck region. Uh, and we, we, we can't do much about it now. We may need to do some x-rays, but at the time being, we, we gave her treatment for any uh, shock and spinal injury with the injection she got yesterday. And today we'll just give her pain relief, so we'll see if, if we can take the pain away, whether she feels a little bit more, mm. a bit brighter. And then later on we'll do some x-rays if it's necessary. Okay. Um, All right. Well, thank you. I'll give you a ring tomorrow and let you know how yeah. she's getting on, and mm -hmm. I'll just keep her on the fluids and pain relief. Yeah. Okay. After a traumatic event, it's not unusual for a badger to shut down completely and sleep for days. An X-ray at this critical stage could prove too stressful, so the best course of action is to administer pain relief and see if the badger has the strength and will to survive. The badger remained incapacitated and it looked like she was giving up, until a week later and after a lot of persistence from Sarah and Hazel, she began to eat and her strength started to return. So it's like she's suddenly gone, oh God, I actually really wanted that. Since then, she's been moved up to a larger enclosure to encourage her to move around. But Sarah's still very concerned about her mobility. Well, I'm going to check on the badger that's been with us for a couple of weeks. She's making good progress considering the condition that she came in on. Um, it looked extremely um, bleak at the time with... She was in an extreme amount of pain. We've now moved her up into the flight so she's got more area to move around in. Her body condition's really good and she seems to be eating well now on her own without having to tweeze or feed her. But I really need to assess how she's moving because she does seem to hold her limbs in strange angles at certain times. We know there's no actual break um, anywhere, but whether there's some nerve damage, um, only time will tell with that. So I'm gonna try and see if she'll cooperate. She's not quite as friendly as she was. Before Sarah can see her walking, she needs some gentle encouragement out of the chamber. Come here. <laughs> You're going to camp out. Easier said than done. Go on then, go out. That's easier. She's gone out. She's gone out. Legs are moving. What I'm going to do is just quietly shut her door so we've actually got her in there for a while. And go around and have a look. What I want to do is see her moving. A few days ago she was very wobbly and she wasn't using her. You're slightly different to a few days ago now. I've been so worried about her and you saw the condition that she came in on was really awful and I don't know why but I do believe you get a gut reaction and something inside me said just to give her some time and she has got some coordination problems you can see that but to see this badger now mobile and standing on her back legs using her front legs trying to get out of this flight is absolutely incredible only two weeks into it now which is remarkable that she's even behaving the way she is. She's frightened of me, she's wanting to curl up. Um, she's not ready for release yet, but I pretty touch wood, I would now say that this badger is going to go back. I'm going to open her box up again now, because she's obviously, I've seen her move, I'm really happy with that. And she obviously wants to curl up, she doesn't want to be bothered by us. So I'll lift up her thing and we'll pop her in and check her in another week or so. She hasn't already climbed her way out. And then she can go back in her little hole where she feels safe. Brilliant, absolutely brilliant. Oh, 
It's nothing like catching a badger in the dark, I tell you. Right, Steve, just a bit careful with this one. Hello, little badge. She's trying to get back into a chamber, but she'll be all right. Um, this is a badge we had in, had in for about six weeks, which is about the maximum length of our unwritten rule of keeping an adult badger in. Okay. She came in, she's really collapsed, nearly dead. She had terrible bruising on her abdomen. She'd been hit on the head, was pretty sure it's an RTA, brought in by the badger group. But for four days, she's about comatose. Absolutely unbelievable. We didn't think she'd make it at all. Um, and now, after six weeks, she's fighting fit. Yes. And very feisty, as you'll probably find out in a minute. Aren't you, little badge? Yeah. So, where does this differ from um, like keeping orphaned ones? Well, orphaned ones, obviously, they're all together, they're a group. They haven't been used to the wild yet. Right. And obviously, these have been used to the wild. They're not solitary animals, so they're in solitary confinement, really. Yeah. So, yeah. we just try to really limit any adult creature being in here as any more than six weeks and she's right on the margins. So what I think we'll try and do, Steve, is we can try to get it into a corner, be it wherever she decides to go. Then we'll yeah. just try and slide the box in on a slight angle and she might just go in the box if we're lucky. Right, okay. As long as we don't sort of stress her out too much. All right, sweet one. Where are you gonna go? You go into that corner. There we are. You go there. Yeah, go on, go on, go on, go on. Go away from me a bit. There we are. You go down there. You go down there. Yeah, there's a good batch. Now if we're really slow and really steady, she might go in. Go on down. Go on down. There's a good girl. Superb. I mean, a lot of people grasp, and if you do grasp them, it's a good way of doing it. But A, they can come out of the grasp because they've got such small, you know, yeah. such small heads and necks. And B, they really stresses them, obviously. You imagine that all that around the neck. Any wild animal, if you put something around its neck, it thinks it's going to be killed. You know, yeah. that's what it thinks yeah. is going to happen. So if you can get them to do that, it's absolutely textbook. Brilliant. Come on, little badge. She's certainly put on some weight. I'm taking her back to where she was found. Dave and Jeff from the West Surrey Badger Group have already located her set and are waiting for me at the release site. Hiya, Dave. Hiya, Jeff. Hi, How you doing? Hi. Right, I've got a badger on the board. Good. Does it fit? It's very fit and round to go. Just across the road, there's a common telltale sign of badger activity. And here you can see there's a pathway. Oh, yeah, look. Very clear, isn't it? And all the badger hair there as well. They obviously use this extremely regularly, don't they? So as not to disturb the rest of the badgers, we're going to let her go a few yards away from the set. Once released, she'll follow the familiar smells towards home. Oh, come on, little one. Come on, little one. Come on. If you like our videos, please subscribe to our channel by pressing the red button and make sure you hit the bell to get notifications of our latest content. If you want to help us save wildlife, please donate. Every pound you give will help us to save more wildlife.